Hi, I'm Sarah Holmes. I'm a zoologist and run Enviro EDU, a local environmental education organisation based in Mildura. Today I'm working for the Mallee Catchment Management Authority and we are going to be talking about an amazing group of animals that are not only found in our wetlands and floodplain and bushland areas, but are also found in our backyards, frogs. The Mallee catchment is the largest catchment in Victoria, covering over 40,000 square kilometres. There are about 240 species of frog in Australia, and nine of these are found in the Mallee catchment. Frogs are amphibians, which means they rely on water to complete their life cycle. They are ectothermic, or cold-blooded, which means they can't regulate their own heat. They rely on external heat sources, such as the sun, to help warm them up. Three families of frog occur within the Mallee catchment. They are ground frogs, Australian tree frogs, and foam nesting ground frogs. The Mallee CMA has produced a handy field guide which helps to identify frogs of the Mallee catchment. The guide explains the differences in pupil shape, toe pads and feet webbing in the various local species of frogs. 95% of Australian frog species are found nowhere else on Earth. Although we generally associate frogs living close to water bodies, some of our frogs have adapted to live in the cold, snowy, mountainous regions of Australia, while others have adapted to survive the harsh, arid environments of our deserts and shrublands by burrowing underground. Some species, like the Perrins tree frog, can be found in urban areas hunting for insects. Our local frog species may be associated with water bodies, while others are happy to burrow under damp leaf litter. Why do frogs call? Well, only the males call, and they do this to attract a mate, often generating a chorus of competing males. But each frog species has its own unique call, and sometimes this is the only reliable measure to identify the species. The life cycle of a frog is very interesting, with reproduction in all Australian frogs occurring externally. Here we see the four-stage life cycle of the spotted marsh frog. Eggs are fertilised outside the body. Tadpoles hatch out of the egg and can get oxygen from the water using gills. Metamorphosis occurs, where the tadpole develops back then front legs. In the fourth stage, adult frogs can breathe oxygen into their lungs and can also absorb oxygen through their wet skin when out of water. Frogs play a key role in food webs, both as predators and prey. Frogs themselves are carnivores and depending on their size can feed on insects through to small snakes, mice and baby turtles. Did you know that when frogs feed, they blink, which essentially rolls their eyeballs back into their mouth? which helps to push the food from the mouth down into the throat. Amazing! Because of their permeable skin and ability to live in water and on land, frogs are fantastic ecological indicators of the environment. We can obtain a good indication of ecosystem health because frogs are sensitive to environmental change. Unfortunately, frog populations are declining at an alarming rate due to a number of key threats. These include the frog disease, amphibian chytrid fungus, climate change and habitat loss, feral predators such as foxes, cats and mosquito fish, poor water quality and pollution from pesticides, and inappropriate flooding regimes. The growling grass frog, or southern bell frog as they're commonly known, is our local threatened species of frog. Named after their distinctive deep growling call, these frogs range in size from 5.5 to 10 centimetres in length. Their colour can vary from bright emerald green to dark brown or dull olive green, generally with brown, golden, black or bronze spots on a warty back. Growling grass frogs are usually associated with wetland areas, with healthy water plant communities, but they've also been found in artificial or modified wetlands with emergent water plants. They are known locally from sites such as Mulcra Island and Kings Billabong. Growling grass frogs are threatened at a national and state level. Unfortunately, it is thought that the distribution of these frogs has declined significantly over the past 20 years. Have you ever been out in the bush and heard frogs calling and wondered what species they are? Well, there's good news. Frog ID is a citizen science project run by the Australian Museum. 
The project uses audio or sound of unique frog calls to identify the various species and record their locations. There are a couple of simple steps to get started. First, create an account via the Frog ID website. Then, download the free Frog ID app on your smart device. Head outdoors and explore the floodplain or local wetland site to discover different frogs. You can then record and submit the frog calls with the Frog ID app. Check back later online to find your frog calls identified by the Australian Museum. When you collect frog recordings at a wetland or floodplain within the Frog ID app, the data you collect is really valuable and will be used for three different projects. Nationally, the data will be used by the Australian Museum to measure frog health and distribution across the whole country. The Victorian State Government will use the data as part of a project called Wetland Monitoring and Assessment Program. Here your data will be used to investigate how frogs respond to water delivery at wetlands and floodplains. Locally, the Mallee Catchment Management Authority will use your frog data to demonstrate to water managers what amazing animals live in the wetland and highlight the importance of delivering water to the site. Thank you so much for watching and we look forward to learning what frog species you have living near you.